private text thread with uh, high school friends. And this includes nine participants, nine chat participants that you uh, engaged with? That's correct. Those participants include people by the name of Bird, Whitey, and Doc, correct? Correct. And then there's some yeah. other folks. So this is a group text or a group chat with you and eight of your high school friends about this investigation. Oh, good news. Yes. You recognize that this chat, this group chat was taking place on January 29th at about 1052 p.m., correct? Correct. So you were willing to tell just a few hours into an investigation of the death of a Boston police officer, you were willing to tell a, a bunch of high school buddies details about the investigation, including the name of the victim, correct? At this point, it's 16 hours later, sir. Not a few. That's 16 is 16 is more than a few. I'm not talking about days later. Yeah, it was about 16 hours later, sir. Correct. And you identified three, three quarters of a day as the Boston police. Officer I think we we'll call it a few. Fallen in the yard at 34 Fairview. And right? we're sharing details Correct. of an investigation with people informed, that are not part of the uh, team, which sounds like a breach of kind of protocol. Incidentally, right? Because you don't share you also information of an investigation high school buddies that quote, with non the powers that need to know people want answers ASAP, correct? Uh, yes. And you knew at that time, you knew at that time, Trooper Proctor, that this was not going to implicate in any way, shape, form or fashion another cop, correct? Correct. 16 hours into it, you in knew this that. this text exchange, let's turn to 2532 actually. Wow. 16 hours into it, and you already were sure it wasn't going to implicate another cop. It's almost like you had thought that from the very beginning. You have that in front of you? Maybe. The owners I, of the house isn't going to get any shit for this, I, right? That's how I interpreted it. Yeah, you interpreted it like he's not going to get in any trouble. He's not going to be a suspect, correct? C correct. And he's not going to be implicated in any way. Is that right? Correct. And your answer was one word, correct? Yes. What was that word? Nope. No. And then you followed that up with an explanation as to why you said no, didn't you? That wasn't the explanation why I said no. I simply said homeowner is a Boston cop, too, meaning Mr. O'Keefe was a Boston cop. The homeowner was a Boston cop as well. The question that preceded your answer, no, nope, the homeowner is a Boston cop, too, was the homeowner is going to get some shit for this, correct? That's not what I meant with that text. <laughs> That's what you wrote. To my satisfaction and to all the members of my unit who investigated the... 16 hours, you were satisfied. Call some speculation. You're an easily satisfied so, guy, huh? I'm going to let it stand. Trooper Proctor, you have to keep your voice up, okay? Jurors need to hear you way back there. The jurors yes, definitely need to hear this stuff. The yeah, the for sure. Is, you hadn't been to the crime scene by the time you wrote this text, correct? Correct. You hadn't been inside the home, correct? No. You had uh, investigated, or sorry, you had uh, questioned a grand total of three percipient witnesses. That is one, <laughs> correct? Then a person with the phone number 0095 wrote, I thought he was drunk. Did he get beat up? You see that? I do. And you wrote, nope. Is that right? Correct. Yet again, this is before 11 o'clock at night on January 29th, 2022, some 16 hours into your investigation. Is that right? Yes. So before you ever went to the crime scene, before you ever went into the house, only having interviewed three folks, you had this case nice and wrapped up, didn't you? Yeah, ah, based on the evidence, point. initially we didn't know what we had. We knew there was some significant injuries to Mr. O'Keefe. Um, if you didn't know what you had, isn't it a little bit early to draw a conclusion well, if you didn't know what you initially, had? we didn't know what we had. Yes. And he had no injuries below the neck. Not that I observed, sir. Not a single broken bone, correct? Not that I was aware of. Not a single fracture, correct? Not, not that I was aware of. Not a single bruise below the neck, <laughs> right? Not that I observed. The pedestrian strikes I've seen have been at high speeds, and 60 plus. A person out of the shoot, right? 60 plus miles per hour. Um, so I, I can't no. recall for right now, top of my head, as far as injuries in the past, pedestrian strikes I've attended. Okay. So, so you, you indicated. So you didn't have training Lally, and experience to know what you were looking at. Lally, you've seen so your conclusions kind of suck now, don't they? Because you didn't Correct. have the requisite Correct. background. Yes. Those are high nice. speed, extremely high speed incidents, correct? Trooper Proctor, let me ask you the question again. Have you ever, yes or no, 
Have you ever, in your experience, seen a vehicle pedestrian incident in which the pedestrian has no bruises? Objection. Have you seen that? I can't. I can't recall. That would be a no. Question. The fact it's not a the fact After it's not a yes wrote, the, 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 the fact it's not a yes is 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 more the problem, right? Because he can't rely on his training and experience if he doesn't have it. We human beings are, if nothing, if not are, are if not nothing, if not pattern recognition machines. We operate based on patterns. We, that's how we operate. So if he had seen a lot of low speed cl cl collisions then he might be in a position to be like, okay, this matches what I understand, but he doesn't have that understanding. So I can't recall is, is an acceptably bad answer because it means, well, he doesn't have, by his own recollection, he doesn't have enough frame of reference to know what he's looking at. So 16 hours into it without sufficient background, he's ready to call it. That's where we're at in this thing. That's the stupid. Great, moving on. And you wrote what? <clears throat> That's another animal we won't be able to prove. That's another animal we won't be able to prove, correct? Correct. But you're ready to Jill call Proctor, it even though you, you can't knew prove that it. There were gonna be things. You're you're ready you're ready to call it, but you can't prove it. Okay. Noted. You know, there there is a saying among lawyers, you know, we only know what we can prove. That, that, that there's a reason that lawyers say that we only know what we can prove. If you can't prove it, what the, what are we talking about? Yeah. Zero zero ninety five then writes, What's the name of the Canton cop living in Canton? The other one involved. Correct? Yes. In other words, that person was asking, tell me the name of the homeowner. Isn't that right? Yes. The guy that's the cop, right? Correct. And you ignored that question for a second time. Is that right? Yes. As a matter of fact, not one time, not once in this entire group chat, did you disclose the name Brian Albert, did you? I don't believe so, no. You were actively trying to hide Brian Albert's name, at least from this conversation. Objection. I'll allow it. Is that what you were trying to do? Absolutely not. But you had no problem sharing John O'Keefe's name mm. with your buddies from high school, right? Mm. Correct. And you had no problem mm. sharing Karen Reed's name mm. with your buddies from high school, correct? I don't believe I named the defendant. Not yet you didn't. Later in the chat. Okay, correct. I mean, not that I should need to point this out, but you know, typically the police don't talk about investigation while it's ongoing, except of course amongst themselves for any number of reasons, both for the sake of the investigation and also for the sake of any potential accused, because you don't want to accuse someone too early because the accusation itself carries weight. So a good police department doesn't talk about it, both for operational security because you don't want to leak details. There's a, there's any number of reasons not to talk about an investigation. Operational security, operational knowledge, you don't want to leak information uh, from the investigation because if you ever come in contact with the, uh, the suspect and they reveal information they shouldn't have, that's what you call guilty knowledge because there'd be no way for them to know that except by them being involved. That would be the only way for them to know that. But if you, if you tell them or tell the public, right, then it's no longer guilty knowledge. So you no longer have that as a screening tool to be able to screen out somebody who is or is not available. Cause like, you know, so yeah, you, you don't want to do it for operational security. You don't want to do it because it helps to vet or screen a potential suspect. You don't want to do it because it uh, avoids a, a premature accusation against a potential suspect. If you don't have enough information to bring a charge, for example, right? The police investigate all kinds of crimes every day that you have absolutely no idea ever happened because there, there's not enough to bring a charge. So you have absolutely no idea that the investigation ever happened. And if information later comes to their knowledge that allows them to complete the investigation, you don't want to tip off the suspect to allow them to better cover their tracks. 
you know, to let them know they're suspect. I mean, there's any number of reasons, but this guy is just sharing operational details with high school buddies, and he's the lead detective. Apparently, he doesn't know anything about operational security. Can someone teach this guy about OPSEC? <sighs> okay, good times.